Blender 4.0 just released and there's a bunch of very cool things that are going to be available for you to try right now. Today I'm going to be showing you the ones that I'm going to be using the most, the ones that I think are really good for my pipeline. So yeah, let's go. Very well guys, so we got a lot of things to cover, let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the new AGX color profile. This is something that I'm going to be using quite a bit because I like to do a lot of renders and make sure that they look as cool as possible. So as you can see right now, this is the basic filmic view transform. You can find this on your render settings all the way down in the color management option. Technically, technically, by default, this is how the elements would look. But you can see that the exposure of our lights is being too, too much in this particular scene. So if you are normally working with filmic, you're going to get a slightly better effect. Well, this can further be improved by changing this to the AGX filter, which is going to tone down and bring the contrast and saturations down a little bit, giving you sort of a more cinematic look to the whole thing. Now, one quick tip, if you want to turn off the shapes right here, you can go to the overlay menus right here and just remove the extras. They're still going to be affecting the scene, but they're not going to be visible anymore. So right now I'm rendering with GPU and uh, it's quite fast. It's uh, giving us a nice result. And as you can see, we get a very, very nice cinematic effect. One thing that I really like about the AGX is that we actually have the option, by default it's set to none, and we have the option to change the look to other elements, like this punchy option that even brings the light down a little bit more, a little bit more contrast, the colors look a little bit nicer. I don't know. It just I feel like it's a it's a good way to to generate a scene or a, a feel, like a photographic feel that's gonna allow us to get a very nice result. There's a bunch of other things that I'm doing right here. I'm not going over those. I have depth of field, I have um, a very nice camera, uh, nice composition and stuff like that. But I just wanted to cover this AGX color profile because it's very, very important. And the cool thing is when you render, especially on the on the animations and everything, you are gonna be rendering with this color profile. You're still gonna be seeing it with SRGV. I'll probably do a video later on about how this changes things, but you are going to be seeing the AGX color profile, and as you can see, it gives a very, very nice look. That's the first thing. Let's go on to the next one. One of the other big things that we got, especially again, people who are used to doing modeling, texturing, characters, and things like that, is the materials. So if I go to this little character right here, and I go to the materials, you're going to see that the material, the BSDF, which is the one that we normally use, has changed quite a bit. We are going to have the main maps over here, base color, metallic roughness, which are the ones that we use the most, and of course our normal map, and it's going to be a lot easier to find the elements. One particular, particular thing that I didn't mention on the short, but it's uh, quite important, is that they changed the way code works. So code is a pass that we can add on top of our traditional like roughness and, um, and specular pass over here, and we can use it to literally add like a code of varnish or something like that, and it gives some very, very, very nice results as as you can see right here. I added code to both the black pieces and the white pieces, and it's giving us a very nice effect. So let me show you real quick, let's go to shading, how we're gonna be setting up the materials now, because it does change a little bit. Not super like intensely, but just a little bit right here. So I'm gonna go to my elements right here, I'm gonna go to the table, you can see the table already has a normal map node attached to the normal map at channel. And we're going to have this elements right here. Remember that inside of uh, Blender, there's multiple ways in which you can bring the elements. I'm just going to like drag and drop the elements. This one is the ambient occlusion roughness metallic map. So it has three values in this map right here. If you want to split the values, we can press uh, just a shift A and we're going to do RGV separate. Or where is it? Split. Separate color, there we go. We're going to use separate color. We're going to bring the color right here. Now, this one is supposed to be set as a raw color space or non-linear or non-color, whatever. As long as it's not doing any sort of like color correction, it should be fine. The red channel is going to be the ambient occlusion. We're not going to be using it right now. There's really not that much of a change. And we're going to be using the green channel as the roughness and the blue channel as the metallic. So if we go in here, you're going to see that we're going to start getting some interesting variations. Oh on the board right there on the on the edge of the board for the wood you can see the the changes in the in the roughness right there of course the main channels or the two main channels that we're going to be using is going to be the diffuse so let's bring in the diffuse which is the color map we're just going to connect the color map into the base color and we're also going to have of course our normal map which is this one right here and the normal map it should also be set to a linear uh, color space there we go we're going to send this to non-color and this one goes straight into the color right there so if we've done everything properly and we go back to our layout, we should now see our the border of our wood look at that. 
super nice, very photorealistic, just like working exactly as we expect it to work. So that's the other thing. We have a new way to connect things. Just, I mean, it's the same connection. It's just a slightly different here on our element. And now everything's going to be based on this module. So, so if you want to add subsurface, like I did, or if you want to add a little bit of code, if you want to change the specular values of your elements, you want to change the transmission, make it glass, of course, we're going to be doing all of these changes over here on this side of the element. By the way, the AGX things that I mentioned before is going to work really, really nicely with emission. If you push the emission really high and you overexpose certain lights, the AGX will try to kind of like tone those down to make sure that you don't get a super exaggerated saturated look if you do want to have the super exaggerated like saturated look then it's very important not to use the ajx that's why i mentioned on the short that it might not be used for every single uh composition or every single element but it's going to give you a nice detail so there we go let's now let's go to the next one which is very very important and it's of course the it's of course the interface. So the interface changed a little bit. This is something that I'm, I mean, the, the, the font changed. It's not that bad. <laughs> Just stuttering there. The font change is not that bad. It looks nicer, a little bit tidier. One thing I don't particularly like so far is the thing here in the modifier. So you guys remember that usually when we added a modifier, we would get like the full menu of modifiers here. Now they're still here. They're just like organized in their little small elements. And they, they really want you to look for the, the things now. So every single element like every single object can now be searched you can like use a search on any tool any object any any option and again i find that to be nice but at the same time it can be a little bit um, counterintuitive especially if you're coming from earlier versions like i do so the subdivision is now going to be again here in the modifier and here we go let's now look at light linking Light linking, and I saw a comment that was like, I can't believe Blender didn't have light linking until 4.0. Hey, I mean, we're not making the softwares, we're just using them, and uh, we might not have all of the available tools, but now we do have light linking. What the hell is light linking? You guys know that in the real world, if you place a light on the scene, like all of the lights that I have here in my studio, they're going to be contributing light and shadows to the scene. Well, now we can actually decide how or which lights we actually want to have contribute to our scene or not. In this particular element, as you can see right here, I have an area light that's coming from the top, it's kind of like a spotlight. We got this other area light that's this like blue light over here, and we got this spotlight coming from the top. So let's imagine that we only have this blue light coming from this side, and I don't want this thing to be affecting the white pieces. I only want to bring or give the rim light to the black pieces. Well, if we go to the light, let's go to this area light right here, and we go to the over here, where is it? Collections, no. Uh, shading shading there we go we go to the shape to the not, not the light this is a little bit counterintuitive i think i would probably place it over here to be honest but on the object properties you're going to go to the shading tab and you're going to get this light linking option i'm going to create a new light linking for this thing if you don't have anything set up here by default it's not going to do like anything but if we go now to the chest set and i grab this group right here what i can do is i can grab all of the black pieces and i can create a collection so I'm going to do M, new collection. I'm going to call this black pieces and hit OK. Now, all of the black pieces belong to the black pieces collection, as you can see right here. And if we go back to the light, let's go here to my light, I can drag and drop. Oh, let me close that. There we go. I can drag and drop the black pieces into the light linking asset. And what's going to happen is only the elements that are inside of this object will be affected by the light linking effect. So you can see the rim light is only affecting the black pieces. I could then, for instance, go to this guy right here, which should be over here on the chest set. Uh, there we go, the board border. So if we grab the board border, you can grab an object as well and bring it here. Now the board is also going to be affected. I could grab the pieces, which is the board right here. And again, just bring the board and add it into the collection. So by doing that, as you can see, all of the slides are going to be affecting, but only affecting the black pieces. Is this something that you're going to be using in every single scene? Maybe, but usually as if you want to have like a very physically correct uh, render, you might not be using it every single time. But it's very important. I actually did a tutorial very recently with the eyes where I added a single point light that was going and giving us a little like a uh, glowy part on the eye. This is where light linking comes into play because you can have a single light that's only affecting the cornea of the eye and it's only going to be shining on that particular area. So, for instance, this one right here, this area light is affecting everything. I could be like, hey, you know what? I don't want to affect the floor or I don't want to affect this specific part of the scene. And again, we just create a light linking effect and that's it. 
there is also a shadow effect. So right now, let me go to my area one. I'm going to increase the value of this quite a bit. Let's go to like a 40 to make this really, really, really intense. And I'm going to change the size to like a 0.1. So now you can see that we have some very, very long shadows coming here from the, from the black pieces. Because again, this light is giving us that effect. If we go to this element and we go to shadow linking, we can also create a new shadow link. And I can be like, hey, you know what? I don't want shadows to be affecting the board. So if I don't want the board to be part of the shadows, I can get this into the shadow linking. And what's going to happen is now I'm telling Blender, you will not add extra shadows to the floor. Will this give us an unrealistic result? Yes. It, it might, again, not look completely physically correct, but it's going to give us a nice... Um, it's going to give us more control. At the end of the day, the important thing about all of these tools is giving us more controls to get a nice result. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's shadow linking and that's light linking. I'm going to leave this ones right here. And let's go to the last little tip that I want to show you today. So one of the big gripes that I have about um, Blender is a snapping. I don't love the snapping thing, but they did change something that I think works a little bit better. First of all, they changed the order here. They tell you what we're going to be snapping to. So it can be closest, it can be center, mean, and active, which was normally all the way down here. I do find this to be better. So I'm going to go snapping closest, which is the one that I normally use. And let's, for instance, select a vertex, right? So if we go here to vertex and I grab this element and I press G, as you can see, this guy is going to be snapping to all of the different vertices. One of the things that you see right there is that I actually have a little kind of like a, like a, not purple, <laughs> orange square. That's the new snap to base, which is a way in which we can select an object, for instance, this one right here. And if I try to move it around, you can see that now my base has been set so that it's down on the object. Again, if I grab, oh my God, sorry about that. If I grab the, the horsey right here and I try to snap it, you can see that it's going to try to snap, but the base is going to be set up to that vertex right there, which is really a really, really good way to, to set things up. Now, you can change this by just like start your movement and then you press the letter B, set up where your base is going to be, and then you move your object. And as you can see, the object is always going to try to move and snap based on that new pivot point without changing its original pivot point. Now, you can see the pivot point right now. It's right there. So let me like redo that to make sure that it's, it's clear. For instance, this one right here, you can see the pivot point is right there. Let's say object set origin, uh, origin to massive center. So that's normally how it will work. If I try to snap, you can see that um, actually let's change not closes. Let's do center. There we go. So if I do G, as you can see, the center point or my pivot point is always going to try to snap to the vertex that I'm aiming for, right? Well, without having to change the transform, I can press a G, a B to set the base of the object down there. And now I'm going to be able to snap to the vertices using this new sort of like a uh, temporary pivot point, which is again, quite, quite flexible. So I can go right there. And the cool thing about this is it also works on specific axes. So for instance, if I'm sure that I want to go to this square right here, I can just say G and then say in this case, uh, Y, hit B again, B again. And now, as you can see, I'm going to be snapping to all of these different positions. So it's quite precise. I, I don't I'm like I'm definitely going to be using it. And I'm not sure how much, to be honest, but it's a really, really nice addition here to the to the blender thing. Uh, finally, I just want to show you one last thing in the compositing tab that's going to allow us to generate a very, very cool. It's just going to make it a little bit easier to see things. So let's go. So just a final little thing right here. As you can see, I'm doing a very basic compositing to add a vignette. If you want me to teach you how to do it, it's very simple. Uh, I can cover that in a shorter in the video. Just let me know in the comments. And uh, the cool thing about the new compositor is that now images are going to be previewed right here, which is a, again, another way in which we can organize our elements to make sure that we get a nice response here on our object. So that's it, my friends. With this, we are pretty much covered with uh, some of the things that I am going to be using the most in Blender 4.0. There's a bunch of other things about blend, like geometry nodes and animation and bones. I'm going to be doing a little bit of digging on those ones as well. It's not really my area of expertise, as you guys already know, but it's still like free stuff, free updates, free tools. That's all we can ask. And uh, yeah, just download Blender 4.0 and start learning new tools to improve your artwork as well. That's it for today, my friends. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye bye.